In today's episode of The Insect Hunter, I'm gonna share with you a simple way to take better pictures of insects so you can get them identified or just share them with others. Let's find out how to do it. So first off, let's talk about the different tools you're gonna to need to take some good pictures of insects. The first tool you need is a cell phone, which most people have a good cell phone that has a pretty good megapixel camera, but you're gonna need some extra tools to help you magnify and get some better zoom. Um, one of the tools you could use is using a dissecting scope. This is a very expensive tool and um, a bit more costly, so most people probably aren't gonna go with that. You can use that for magnification, or you can use a hand lens, which I think is the best choice. And these only cost about 10 bucks, whereas this is gonna cost hundreds or thousands of dollars depending on the type of scope you wanna get. You'll also need some insect handling tools. Um, I like to just have some brushes um, for handling very soft-bodied or fine insects or having some forceps so you can handle them because we don't wanna damage the insects and you may not want to touch them yourself anyways. Depending on what type of insect you're working with, you may want to kill them in order to get a better picture. Working with dead insects is easier, but trying to get them into a natural pose or getting their legs to spread or do other things like they would naturally can be a challenge. So you have to kind of make that decision based on your judgment. But for a flying insect, like the one I'm gonna look at today, it, there's not really an option of taking a picture of this thing without killing it unless I stick it in the freezer for just long enough to kind of slow it down and maybe get it groggy enough that I can take a picture but then I run the risk of it just flying away so that's why normally you would want to kill them before you take the picture if you need to learn how to kill and preserve insects properly I just posted a video it is available right there so you can watch that and learn about the different methods and what type of method may work best for you all right, so let's go ahead and let's do a demonstration of how to make this happen. So I've got my insect in here. You can kind of see him. And I'm going to transfer him onto this white sheet of paper. I think white is probably one of the best colors you can use to kind of show contrast and give a feel of what the insect looks like. But you could use another color too if you wanted to. You could use blue or some other color as well. You can use whatever you'd like. So I am going to transfer this insect out of here. And where this is a mosquito or something similar, I am going to use my forceps in order to remove that. And then we put them onto the paper. One of the key things to remember when you're taking pictures of insects is that you want to get as many shots as possible that you can. So you want to get as many parts of the body as you can. So let me show you just with my cell phone camera how good of a shot I can get. I can get a pretty good shot of this regardless, so let's look at that. That's a pretty good shot, a pretty good picture, I'd say, if I get in as far as I can and come out a little. Pretty good. But if I use the hand lens, what you're gonna do basically is you take the hand lens and you put it right in front of the camera and you're going to get your camera and match and line that up with the hand lens and then you'll get this extra magnification. You can't really see anything right now because I'm not really focused at this point. And we're probably a little too far zoomed in, so. There we go, as you can see with the hand lens. It's giving us a bit of a better picture. Looks better to me, looks like we've got a better zoom. I can even zoom using with the hand lens. I'll try and zoom here with the hand lens on. But it should give us a better focus. See how we can see the antennae a little better with this. That's one of the key parts you want to take pictures of. So when you're taking pictures of the insect, you want to get pictures of the legs, the antennae, the head and the wings. And this, I'm, I'm pretty sure this is a mosquito just because of the way that the legs kind of fold back here, but I could be wrong. Sorry if I'm a little shaky with my phone. Okay, now let's uh, flip the bug over. Just flip him over. Let's see. Here we go. I'm trying to get a different shot here now. 
try not to move the legs. If you are grabbing and handling an insect, it's best to just move the body. The legs are probably more fragile for the most part. Okay, so now we're gonna do kind of a side shot of the side of it. And you can always rotate things too, you know, rotate your medium. Pretty good shot there. Especially the head, that's that head one really. Some close good shots. So again, the key parts you wanna try and get shots of are the head, the wings, the legs, the antennae, and the back. So that's important. So we're gonna go ahead and flip this guy. See those fine hairs? You, there's no way you can see those with the naked eye. See, I'm getting close enough with this scope here that I can actually see the fiber of the paper, see. Okay. Again, take your phone, find your camera, so right there, and then I'm going to line up this right on that. Hopefully those tips help you guys out if you are trying to use pictures to identify insects, don't overlook important clues like where they were found, including what plants they were found on, and what time of day they were found, and also what time of year. Those things can be important clues to help us understand what type of insect you might be dealing with. So get as many clues as you can, get some good, crisp, clear pictures using a hand loop and your cell phone, and you should be able to get a decent identification, at least down to the family level for the most part. Thank you guys for watching this episode. Let me know in the comments if this was helpful for you. And uh, if you do end up using this method with the hand lens or hand loop, um, take some pictures and send them to me at theinsecthunter at gmail.com. I'd love to see your pictures and possibly show them in a future video um, as one of the insects of the week or something. So take some pictures and send those to me and I'd love to see what you guys are getting pictures of. And don't forget that if you've subscribed or if you're going to subscribe, Click on the subscription and click on the bell to indicate that you want to be reminded when new videos come out. At this point, I post once every three weeks. Um, that may change in the future, but that way then you know when another video comes out where big adventures start small. Thanks for watching.